It's a study session for a residential building at 64th and uh, Christie, second such study session. Okay, yes, this is the second study session. The first one occurred in June, and it is for a final development plan uh, for the 64th and Christie building. Uh, just to go back into a little background, uh, this is the first building in phase one of the marketplace PUD, uh, which was approved a couple of years ago. So this is the master plan and the phase one, and uh, this building encircled in red is what we are talking about today. And that, that building again in full build out. The PUD that was uh, approved had, this is the only form of building that was shown on the marketplace uh, PUD. Just in terms of where we are today, uh, like I mentioned, the proposal was reviewed at the June study session. A number of design comments were made at that time. Uh, in response to that, uh, staff hired Origins to assist with design comments that uh, we received from you. This is something not unusual. We've done that before in the past uh, during the paper mill project specifically. The applicant, uh, so what the applicant and uh, staff of uh, the city as well as origin staff have met several times and so what is what we're going to do now is that we are going to request the applicant to give the presentation uh, there have been a number of changes in response uh, to the comments that were made and this will be followed by a presentation by origins who would kind of give a, a more design critique to the proposal in front uh, proposal that's going to get presented today just so that you know, the project is scheduled uh, for consideration by the commission uh, on September 23rd and then by the council on October 19th. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to the applicant. Thank you, Maru. Technology comes together. So I know you guys are really tired, uh, and I'm tired too. So we'll, I'll do my best to be concise and uh, be instructive too. So I'm Rob Zirkel. I'm a principal of Steinberg Architects, uh, working with uh, Denise and the good folks at TMG. Um, as Maru said, we were here uh, about a month ago, showed you this project, and um, I'm we, we have received several comments at that meeting and from the consultant and city staff and we've been working um, late into the night just like this for the last month. So I'm sort of happy to be at this milestone uh, moving forward. Uh, this is a reminder, this is just a quick shot of one of the renderings and what it looked like uh, last time. Um, we, um, we wanted to convey that we heard a lot of comments about this project uh, from this from this commission, uh, from staff, and we 
we wanted to, uh, you know, we listened really closely and wanted to implement as many changes as we could. I mean, I think Denise was very clear last time about the financial constraints and the density constraints, particularly as it relates to the grant that she's applying for to help uh, be a catalyst for this project. So we have a number of tight variables, but we really wanted to be responsive. And um, in thinking about what we heard that night, thinking about the, uh, the comments we got from staff specifically, they kind of fall into kind of five main categories which are listed here. Lots of discussion about what the quality of the public realm is like, the sidewalk widths, these sorts of things. Uh, how the building interfaces uh, with the public realm, the points of connection and ingress and egress out of the building was a major point of concern. Um, talked a lot about the podium garden, uh, the quality of the outdoor space that's proposed in there, and that was something that we worked really hard on moving forward. Um, there was a lot of discussion, too, about some of the, the units, um, particularly the one-bedroom lofts. Um, and so, you know, we dove in there and worked with staff and the consultant to try to change the game there and make the mix of units much richer and nicer. Um, and then there were a number of comments, too, about the, you know, the aesthetics. And so, all of these things sort of highlight five main categories. I'm just going to try to bracket a little more kind of this descriptive discussion around each of those five as we kind of move forward here uh, tonight. So first up, because I think this is something we talked a lot about, was uh, the, the public realm. Um, the image that's shown on the screen, uh, we talked about the park a lot last time, even though we didn't have any visual evidence of where it would be or what it would be. This is not something that we're proposing, as you all know, for this project, but it is an illustrative uh, graphic to show you how the building is positioned with what, at least in its current iterations, conceived as where the, the public park would be um, uh, located. Okay. Well, it's, uh, let's see. How about if I turn it on? Maybe that makes a difference. The label? Well, maybe not. Um, so the park is to the right of the screen and the building is to the left. So, you know, there's a strong consideration about how the building meets that edge. You can um, point with your cursor. On hmm? the, you can point with your cursor on the screen. Or maybe you can't. Well, I can't. It's okay. Um, we'll go through it. Um, so the, um, the interface with that park is important and then the edges of the project specifically. So we heard loud and clear, we want bigger and wider sidewalks. So as you know, we've got an issue with the infiltration planners that we need to meet our C3 requirements. Uh, we have a certain amount of square footage that we have to maintain. We've got building setbacks that we need to be respectful of. So we have a, sort of a tight envelope to make changes within, but we did. Uh, so on 63rd, we increased it by 18 inches from four and a half feet to six feet. Uh, we can actually go bigger on 63rd if this commission gives a directive to Public Works to let us narrow the the driveway that is 63rd from 22 feet to something less, we can give that back to the sidewalk and are happy to do so if we can negotiate that with Public Works. Um, Christie was widened from six feet to seven foot six inches and 64th was widened from eight two to nine four. So on all sides of the building, we try to be responsive and uh, work, with, uh, work with staff and a consultant team to, to uh, make the public realm a little bit wider. Um, so at the, at the ground level, and this is a ground level plan, there were a number of comments about uh, not just the wider sidewalk, but what's the quality of the public realm like? Um, how does the building meet the street? What are some of the things that we can do to the building to make it a little bit nicer? Um, chief among them, on 63rd, you would recall that we had a driveway into the garage on 63rd. We had a driveway on 64th and 63rd. We removed that driveway along 63rd and replaced it with a unit. So now the entire length of 63rd is stoops and our uh, stair access and exit from the podium garden. Um, in the lower left of the screen, uh, you'll remember that there was a, a slightly challenged uh, three bedroom unit uh, more or less at ground level in that portion of the building before. And uh, pursuant to Commissioner Flores' comments about what that corner could be like, particularly opposite the retail use uh, in the subway on Avenue 64, we wanted to try to create a more kind of public face in, on that corner. And so we moved the fitness area, which was up in the upper levels of the building, and swapped it with that three bedroom essentially, giving the three bedroom a nicer kind of catbird seat up above grade and putting that commercial use on the corner. Um, at the same time, 
uh, we looked at the length of Christie and re-examined the idea about that continuous porch that we had. There were a number of comments about um, whether that was an effective uh, idea along that street or not. Um, we got the impression that not many people besides us thought, thought that it was a good idea, so we thought about it a little more deeply. Um, so what, what's showing there is uh, stoops, which now there are five to serve the 10 units that are there. They're shared before we had three stair access points up to that level. Um, so now there's more stairs. There's privatized areas in front of the shared stoops that serve the townhouse units. And specifically, we added those townhome units um, at the advice of uh, staff and design consultant, which we think is actually quite a good idea to give the length of Christie a kind of very prominent feel by articulating that sort of two-story datum. Um, we raised also the uh, finished floor elevation. Um, mind you, we're working in a very constrained height limit at 60 feet as defined by the building code and wanting to achieve those one bedroom lofts in a portion of the project really makes the section exercise challenging. We've got a lot of stuff to fit in to stay within that 60 feet. So uh, in working uh, through the section, we were able to raise it up another six inches to an even two feet. And between uh, the townhomes themselves along Christie, we're gonna provide planners at that level as well. Um, so we get a little more height and privacy and buffering from the sidewalk. Um, the, the other points around the building that I think are relevant, there was a lot of discussion about how trash is gonna be handled. So on the upper left of the plan, you'll see that there's a trash staging area that's within the building, but outside the security line of the gate into the garage. And it's tucked around the corner so that uh, on trash days, you can have easy access in and out of the trash, but not, it's not in an unsightly location out on the sidewalk, which we think, you know, given the way we had it designed last time, I think is a market improvement for how that would work. Um, also, there's a, a loading zone um, right next to that. My mouse here. Um, that is striped. It's a little tough to see on the screen. It's washed out. But it's, it's right near the elevator core off 64th. So when you have move-ins and move-out, there's a pretty conveniently located place for that to happen. And things can be moved easily and expeditiously in and out of there. There we go. So um, the, next is, the next issue is how does the building relate uh, to the access points? Now, uh, specifically, there was a lot of commentary and discussion, um, both at the hearing and subsequent with staff and the consultant, about what the stair up to the podium is like. What are the points of entry into that? How can they be improved? Um, and keeping in mind that uh, we are bound by the grant application to stay at 190 units. Um, we proposed 193 a month ago. We had a very tight sort of set of constraints to work around. So we knew we needed to lose a few units to be able to try to achieve some of these things, but we really wanted to be specific about where we did that and try to get the highest and best effect. I think the biggest change from last time that you'll notice is, that, is the purple color where the rec room area is. We uh, eliminated a unit along uh, 63rd we reoriented that space so that it flows from front to back so that not only is there visual access from the podium garden but there's also a visual access and a terrace that wraps around that space which slightly cantilevers over the edge of the building onto the 63rd street side so that there's a much more kind of visible permeable connection in that location so that cost us a unit but we feel like at the end of the day it ramps up the public presence of that portion of the project on 63rd which we think is important um, we, uh, as I said, there's a, there's a terrace that wraps around that space that um, uh, works alongside the stair, which we'll see in images as we move forward, that's large enough to put some tables and chairs out there. It's large enough to have uh, a number of different kinds of small gatherings out off the back of that space to be able to address the park and, and project interest uh, to the sidewalk when uh, events are happening. The, um, you know, this is a, this is a resident focused amenity space, this podium garden. Um, but knowing that the exit that we're required to have from that podium space has the chance to become something that adds to the bottom line of 63rd, we've kept the security line of that up onto the podium. So the stair itself, as it reaches the sidewalk, is open. Anyone can sit on it. Anyone can walk on it. Um, it's favorably oriented to the park. It's favorably oriented 
uh, from a solar access standpoint. So if you get your lunch at the subway, it's just as nice to walk over and eat on those steps in the sun than it is in the shade on that side of, of Christie. So we feel like we're making lemonade out of lemons uh, by trying to pair that stair up with the, the rec room and placing it out on 63rd. Uh, it's also, you know, it's a double height space when you're standing there looking up. It's, you know, it's more than 20 feet tall. It's significantly taller than this. It's not a tiny aperture into the space. I mean, you can stand there and look and see it, and we'll get to some images later that show this a little more three-dimensionally. Um, and one of the things that I think is important to um, also think about is, is that there was an idea that we could, we could take out a unit and then enclose the corridor in glass and get more transparent feeling. I mean, that's true and not true. It would increase the volume off 63rd, but this is a shot of a corner glass in daylight under a, under a canopy that would be sort of similar to the situation that we have. You know, glass in the daytime, when, you know, when rendered in sunlight, is dark. I mean, it's reflective. It's not fully transparent until it's backlit in the evening, which, you know, it's hard to see the courtyard anyway because it's the evening. So it would create more space, but we feel like the loss of the unit and the power of that unit and keeping our density goals and stuff and its location along the park, uh, it didn't seem to us that it was going to achieve the desired effect to lose that unit, so we decided it was a better idea to keep it. Um, so then being up on the podium itself and then talking about the quality of that outdoor space, um, there was a lot of questions and concerns about that space that we're designing feeling smallish or feeling cramped. There was a lot of uh, propensity for it to be dark and full of shadow. So uh, those were comments we heard at the commission level. Those were comments we heard from the consultants. So we, we were curious about whether or not our instincts were right. So we did a solar study. Uh, we compared it to uh, two projects which are comparable in terms of its use and scale and location. Uh, the middle image, the top images are images of our project. The middle image is Age Song. Uh, the bottom image is Uptown. Uptown is a hugely important comp for us because it's, it's sort of setting the bar uh, in terms of, you know, a successful leased up building with certain kinds of units uh, at a certain kind of density. Um, you know, as we, and, and we were methodic about this. Uh, we compared it to both equinoxes, the spring and the fall, summer and winter at 9, 3, and noon. Um, and I think as you, as we zip through these things, just focus your eyes and, on the amount of green that's there um, and the scale. Our courtyard is quite big by comparison. It's quite light by comparison to some of the other comps. And um, we feel like we were doing okay there. That being said, we, we heard pretty clearly that there were ways that we should think about making it better, um, which we really tried to do. Um, so there's a couple of moves that we made at the roof line that we think add to the bottom line. And this is where I really wish I had a laser pointer, but um, you can see on the, on the left-hand image, let me get my cursor here. Okay, so there is on the, I don't see, I don't see the cursor. Do you see the cursor? There, there we go. Oh, hallelujah. So we, um, Lost a unit on the top of this uh, floor um, by eliminating the one bedroom units and creating some shallow wide studios that set back from the parapet line. Um, the important thing about that, and I think there's an interesting thing that you can see here, the edge of this studio that comes out to the edge of the building, and remember in the previous scheme the, that parapet came all the way out to that edge, that's the limit of where the shadow line is. So you can see if that was continuous across, a lot more shadow. This is summer at 3 o'clock. By pulling this back, to create this roof terrace. Actually, what we found is, is that, you know, our instinct was, well, geez, maybe we should look at losing that whole row of units along there. Well, actually, you don't really need to. It, there, there is a depth in that terrace that's calibrated so that we can keep four units, even though we had five there, and still get the maximum amount of light in there based on the solar conditions at any of these times of year. So, again, trying to do something little that means a lot. Um, over here, uh, at this point, we had a two bedroom. We had two bedrooms that stacked up in that corner location. We changed this one to a one bedroom and created an accessible terrace here as well. And actually, um, when you study this, this is where our seating and barbecue areas are. That point uh, actually came out here and, and created quite a shadow. So by taking that portion away, uh, it made a big difference in terms of the solar access in that courtyard. And so, you know, a, an important point for us.
Um, there we go. This is a, just a quick section real fast just so you can see on the bottom section, and I'm looking for my cursor here. Maybe I can find it. So the bottom section, you'll see uh, how that, that flat steps back. Uh, and it doesn't have to step back very far to mean a lot. You said that was an accessible uh, terrace? So, so that linear terrace uh, uh, is directly accessible to the units that are there. Oh, the, the, the terrace that's at the point is accessed off the corridor, so that's a common area terrace. So it's, it's both. It's private and, uh, and public. Are the linear terraces continuous, or are they for each unit separated? Uh, well, they're for each unit, how we separate them, we still have to detail. Uh, we would want to do it in a way that wasn't so wall-like. We would rather use landscape um, or kind of more software means to kind of create the divisions there. Um, but the intent would be something that would allow some private zone off those units, but not be something that was large that created more shadow or was something heavily constructed, something softer. And uh, so this is a, an image um, of sort of what the look and feel of, of this space is like. Um, you know, we, we talked a lot about this at the, at the hearing. We talked a lot about this with staff. I mean, I think that there was a general sense that the, the podium space as it was previously des designed didn't flow and it wasn't open enough. Um, it was a little more kind of walled off with lots of sort of taller planters that captured space in a little bit more of a private way. Um, and so we decided to take a step back and look at it as a little bit more of an open space. Um, we had changed around uh, the planning design quite a bit to create more passages through uh, the planters uh, using softer forms of landscape to create some defensible space in front of the podium access um, points and the units that address the podium as opposed to privatized gardens. Um, Jeff Miller, our landscape architect, will go into sort of greater detail a little bit later about exactly how this works. But, you know, those are some of uh, the highlights. Uh, additionally, there's a row of palms that are aligned to the aperture from the street so that when you're standing on the sidewalk looking up or you're on the podium looking out, there's, you know, kind of visual cues in that aperture about something happening up on that podium that's, that's nice to see. Um, that's, looking, that, that, that's looking south. So this is, if the plan uh, in your memory. This is sort of standing at the end of the Patan Court, sort of with the arbors just behind you, hmm. looking back towards the rec room. And yeah, so there's the rec room there behind the pillar that you can see through, mm -hmm. looking south. due south. Yeah, and then you'll see up above the metal expression there um, where we've taken off that sort of corner of that unit. So, and that's actually was sort of a nice device for us because it allowed us a, a place to make a, a material change that we felt like was pretty nice to be able to add some variety and texture to the architectural feeling within that as well. So working with the landscape to make it uh, a little more kind of uh, lively uh, and more open space. And the young happy couple in the background, they just came up the stairs. Right? Which they can't do legally or something. Uh, or, or they came out the corridor uh, from their unit. But um, um, we, um, we, there, was, there was a lot of talk about balconies, too, um, and specifically as it relates to having more of them, um, having more points of access to the out of doors. And so we. We went around the building, you saw it on the previous image in the courtyard, there's, an addi there's additional balconies and Julia balconies that we didn't show in the previous um, iteration. And mind you, it was probably a little hard f for you to understand what that space was like because we didn't do images like that of that space at that time. So having the benefit of going back and, and developing the design, we get a chance to show you these things. But um, sort of working our way around the building, we've, we've increased the number of balconies by 30%. So that's not counting, you know, ground floor, podium level access uh, units that already have access to the out of doors. So we've put in more balconies. Uh, we've done them around all sides of the building. So in this image, you can see if I can find my cursor. Um, level two, that, uh, we've got uh, units with balconies, there we go, that uh, are, are recessed from the street. So they're roof terrace balconies as opposed to projecting balconies. So they're kind of contained within these zones in these units on the upper floor. 
Um, we have um, a little tough to see in this view. Uh, there's views that we'll see later that show this a little more clearly, this nice balcony at the, at the stair entrance. Um, working all the way around to uh, 64th, we have similar balconies um, over on 64th that are similar to what's on Christie. We have the projecting balconies in those corner units along 64th. Uh, and just a you know, quick note about that um, uh, quarter on, on 64th. You know, there was, a, there was a desire to use a kind of bolder form, a bolder color um, that worked with these balconies and storefront glazing in the units to create sort of a more sort of stronger appealing view both from the sidewalk but also, you know, viewed heavily from the freeway. There's thousands of people a day that will be looking at this. So something bold and noticeable from a distance and up close and utilizing the balconies and, and the storefront glazing, which is expensive in a wood frame building by the way, it was, was useful for us. And um, on the east elevation, um, you'll see that there's been a number of Im improvements to that facade uh, that we've pushed and pulled the floor plan and the units to create some relief on there, but we've also put a lot of balconies in there as well. So each of those four silos that um, respond to sort of pulling out the studios and the lofts above, all have balconies off their units. We've pulled the, the center portion back in the middle of the building to create a nice generous balcony zone there. So really all the way around the building, we've tried to uh, ramp that up a little bit. So uh, unit design. We, uh, I'm just gonna run quickly through, made a lot of changes to how the units uh, sort of work and how they stack through the building. We've seen this before. We've got flats along 63rd and 64th, townhomes along Christie. Um, the, the nice thing about the townhomes, they give a, a stronger presence. They give us a nice mix in the unit variety. Um, they uh, are unique in a rental product. Um, we wanted to put some in and put them in the highest and best use location along Christie. Um, but for unit mix and density reasons, it made sense to stay with flats along 63rd and 64th, but we've articulated those in a way that um, we see in the massing that it's uh, more in keeping with the scale and character of those townhomes. So working up to the podium level, the nice thing about the, uh, the, the townhomes, which were born out of conversations with staff and the consultant, was a, a, a module of that townhome that didn't occur to us. Those are about 16 feet wide. But in a way, it's actually quite nice because that's reflective of what the module would be for in a flat anyway, in a kitchen, dining, living room arrangement. It's about how wide that would be anyway. And then upstairs, it's a pretty generous bedroom. Uh, that also correlates great with studios that are stacked above it as it moves through the building as well. So you get very clean systems that stack through. You get very clean structural systems that stack through, uh, in addition to creating some variety use, which is nice. Um, at the top of the building here, you can see where we've integrated this plan shift to decrease the length of this corridor, give some articulation along the long face of this courtyard, uh, and then pull these studios, make these studios a little bit larger than the typical studios in the project, but also, as you saw in the previous image, you know, help uh, mix up how the massing on that elevation works as well. Pardon me for one second. I'm going to uh, follow a little protocol here and adjourn this meeting and then ask for a vote of the commission to continue this meeting. Uh, is everyone in agreement? You continue the meeting? Okay. Oh. Uh, unopposed meeting continues. Thank you. <laughs> it's just the eleven thirty protocol. Up. Okay. And wrap it up. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll just get to you. this is something we want to touch on real fast. Uh, these are kind of our typical units in the project. Uh, you'll notice that um, some of the key considerations are the, the way that the plumbing systems in the units need to track in a multifamily building like this, need to track vertically, and they need to be in locations within the building where you can be efficient in your use of plumbing. It means that in a double loaded building, you have a front door that's by those, those spaces. Um, there were some questions and comments about some of those qualities of those units. And what I want to do is just show you what our competition is. What are people in the marketplace leasing? These are units in Uptown. They're not identical carbon copies to ours. They're pretty similar. 
they're facing the same kind of infrastructural and systems issues that we are. So there's there's an entry that's near a kitchen which proceeds to a dining and living room. It's flanked in this case by bedrooms and bathrooms in a similar situation to ours. Base three apartments, another successful project, same sort of thing in terms of how these one bedrooms and two bedrooms lay out. Again, some similarities. Um, the core yards on 65th, again, very, uh, th these are very similar kinds of units. And so when we're competing in the marketplace for them, we want to give people you know, what they want. Uh, and what, what it's going to lease. These are our special units, uh, the one bedroom lofts on the right of the screen. Uh, we talked uh, at length with the building department about uh, maximizing as much as possible the area of that sleeping loft, uh, the largest closet that we can, by code, in a mezzanine situation, be allowed to put in, has been put in since last time. The townhome units on the left. Uh, you know, show a very nicely designed, narrow, slightly deep, but heavily glazed uh, townhome unit that addresses Christie, which is nice. Uh, and these are sections just to sort of show a little bit uh, how we made some changes in the roof form to be able to give a little more volume in the sleeping lofts um, on the, um, the lofts in this area of the building, which helps with the massing articulation, but also gives us a different kind of, of where we had a single loft design last time, now we have three that are all driven by different kinds of ceilings and different amounts of natural light. Um, and so just uh, quickly, if I could, I think it might be useful to um, show you this cool. little model here. Um, so this is a, you know, call it a 94% accurate model. This is a tool that we use to go through and study the drawings that you see in, front, in, the, in the planning submission set is, are, are accurate. These are very, very close. Um, but it was, they're instructive to sort of walk you around the building to show you sort of how this thing works. So here along 63rd, you know, standing in front of the stair, you know, this is, the, this is the terrace that overlooks off of the rec room. This is the size of the stair. You can see when you're standing across the street, and certainly when you get in close under the sidewalk, you get a view of what's going on up there in the courtyard. You'll see those palm trees. We don't have landscape in this model because it would grind on like a snail. But um, you see the, the transparency of the rec room. You'll see in the articulation on this elevation, the, the continuance of the datum that is set by the townhomes on Christie. So these are flats and they're stacked in a way to sort of give you a certain aesthetic, but it follows suit with what's happening in other areas of the a building. Quick question, the, um, the gate, locked gate at the top of the, yes. Uh, right over here. Is that going to be glass? Uh, it's going to be picketed. We think that there's probably reason to be concerned about glass from a maintenance standpoint. Uh, okay. You know, picketed bars, say half inch section, they're four inches apart uh, or so. It's not okay. a guardrail, but something that's going to be as transparent as possible and something that's going to be nice to look at as well. Um, this sort of marching around the building, you'll, you'll continue to see that we've stayed with a, a, a strong articulation here at this corner at 63rd. Um, addressing the, uh, the leasing office, the entry canopy, which uh, we didn't have in the previous scheme, you know, punctuates this two-story volume here of the entry. You'll see in looking at the, uh, the rhythm and spacing of the units here along Christie that there's a lot of in and out with these units, um, higher parapets to articulate the roof line, the setbacks for the balconies. Uh, the face of these uh, townhomes, which are set back, and you know, ag again, the, the planters aren't shown here between the units, but you get the gist that the, that the uh, infiltration planters precede the stairs, and there'll be spaces that are landscaped between uh, the, the townhomes themselves. These are punctuated by canopies. This version is showing a, uh, a, uh, a little bit more glazing here than probably we can afford, but uh, what we had chosen to do um, in the submittal is actually use a super nice ceramic tile in this zone to really work with that canopy to sort of pull out the entry uh, as opposed to the glass because there's already tons of glass in those, in those units. 
here again is looking at 64th, showing how the, the kind of storefront quality of that fitness room gives a commercial feel, uh, trying to create a strong form, as I said here before, you know, deep orange color when rendered in setting sun could be very impressive at that corner. Um, this is all storefront glass here, which requires a little bit of structural gymnastics because there's no wall here supporting the floor now, so it takes a little bit of structure here at the corner to be able to sort of make that possible. Um, again, a similar kind of articulation along uh, 64th that uh, is reminiscent of what's happening on Christie. You'll see also that this uh, elevator core um, is now all storefront glass. Uh, at nighttime, this is going to look sweet. It's going to be lit up. It's a space that will constantly have some light in it. It will give a very clean break between these sides of the building. And also, it's pretty didactic when you've got the loading zone right here that you can shuttle back and forth into the elevator. Again, the one remaining garage opening on 64th as opposed to 63rd. You'll see that we've changed up the unit typology of what was a loft here before and turned it into a flat to be able to give some clear story lighting into the loft that's here mix up the roof line a little bit, create a little more interest in variety as you see this, uh, you know, in perspective space along 63rd. Um, in the east elevation, I think is a, you'll, I think you would agree is a profound difference from what you saw last time. It was a very kind of uh, long, uh, flat, uh, not super articulated plane. We've changed the roof line a lot to be able to vary the units. We've pulled some units out to create some of these uh, accentuated portions along here. What you're not seeing at the base is that, you know, and Jeff will go through this a little bit, this is heavily landscaped. There's lots of planting and green screens to be able to sort of soften this edge of this building. But again, the mixes of materials uh, in um, cement plaster, uh, painted corrugated metal, um, uh, lots of glass, balconies. Um, we feel like that this is a, you know, a net add to the, to the quality of the three-dimensional forms there. Um, so with that, I think it's probably a good idea to let Jeff just say a few quick words about landscape. Thank you. Yeah. So let's get you down here, Jeff. I'm just going to put you in pure presenter mode. So just um, so you can use these arrows to move back and forth, so forward and backwards. Okay. Uh, hi there. I'm Jeff Miller. Uh, nice to see you all again. Um, I think where Rob started is kind of where I want to start. Um, what we heard the last time we did hear that we wanted wider sidewalks, and we heard very clearly that we wanted a more open uh, podium experience. Um, so those are the things that I'm going to kind of focus on. Um, the building systems are, are very much the same that they were the last time. We have flow through planters all the way around the building um, at the edges of, of what is the, um, the building footprint. Um, the flow, flu, flow through planters are at grade. Um, they, our plant list um, includes um, both mid-scale and low-scale plant material that we think will be um, interesting and varied all the way around the building. Um, I, I did have a conversation with uh, Commissioner uh, Kummerly uh, a bit about the plant material, and um, I think you should understand that the project has been changing um, since we saw you last, and as the landscape people were kind of catching up with all the changes in the building. So, um, we do have some additional plant material that we will be coming back to you um, during the next um, round. Um, but what we wanted to indicate with the materials that were um, submitted uh, are that we're using mainly native plant materials uh, around the building. Um, we're, it, it's, it's a green building. Um, we're trying to get as many points as we can from the rating systems um, for these plant materials and we intend to further the list uh, as we go. So I think you'll see that uh, in the next and middle as well. Um, so, the, so just going around the building, um, all the way around are flow through planters. Um, there's a six foot sidewalk on 63rd, a wider sidewalk on Christie, and an even wider sidewalk on 64th. And we have a raised uh, infiltration planter along the east side of the building. 
Um, these are um, some kind of blow-ups of these areas so that you can see them a little better. Um, and you'll see the, uh, the, the plant list and the section, um, the section to the left of the screen you can see on 64th, a street tree, uh, a, a wider sidewalk, the at-grade infiltration planter um, around the stair and up to the private terrace. Um, the, the plant list included a number of um, um, shrubs and, and perennials, and we've got some additional materials that we want to consider um, in, in the next round that kind of play into that, that kind of palette that we were using before. So um, you'll be seeing some of those, and, and I'm happy to talk more about what those plant materials ought to be uh, over the next round. Um, this is the Christie Avenue planting. Again, we've got um, the section here, and uh, on this section you can see the plant divider uh, on the terrace. Um, this was a, a point at the last session where um, the terrace was long and continuous, and you can see how it's being um, divided up uh, on the terrace level with a planter. Um, we do have a condition along Christie where there's a... Um, a utility right away, which is uh, meaning that we can't we can't plant trees there, um, but we think we'll have a, a kind of varied group of plant materials along there that will um, add a, a very interesting experience, um, as well as kind of complement what's across the street. Um, on 63rd Street, um, here you can see the the six foot. Um, uh, sidewalk, uh, again the street tree in the section, um, the flow through uh, planter, and, and then the terrace. Um, again, you'll see some additional plant materials that we want to consider in the next round. Um, these are the elevations. Um, um, on the top you'll see the 64th um, street side of the building with the street trees. Um, the infiltration planters, um, uh, the, the lower one is the uh, east-facing um, elevation. Um, we're screening at the garage. We intend to use taller bamboos um, in areas where we can get uh, the, the bamboo to grow up higher, not block out windows. Um, so we have kind of a strategy of, of blocking views to the garage, but softening the edge of the building and also softening the edge of this raised planter um, along that side of the building. Um, this, uh, well, the bottom there is Christy, um, so you can see that, that it does, the lacking part of that uh, elevation is that we don't have any street trees. Um, we did, I did talk to uh, Commissioner Kummerly about uh, the possibility of using green screens on this side of the, um, the project, and I think you'll see that in our next um, round as well. Um, uh, on the 63rd Street side, you can see, uh, again, the street trees, uh, a kind of lush planting along the streetscape, and we think there's enough variety in the plant material there to create um, privacy for the entries. Um, in the podium, there's been a, a lot of changes. You can see uh, along the main corridor at the top of the um, podium, uh, we've aligned the palm trees there, mainly so that um, one can view those from the 63rd Street aperture. Um, we've opened up the podium quite a bit. Uh, actually, in the last um, um, session, one of the commissioners suggested that maybe this was better as a kind of Italian piazza where we didn't have anything in there, and then people just kind of made what they could of the, of the courtyard. He's home watching TV now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's off, and, or he's probably asleep. Uh, <laughs> but um, in any case, what we're showing here is a, a patan court or a multi-use court. Um, we think this would be useful for um, all sorts of activities. It's open. It's surrounded by a, an arbor system that would be covered with um, wisteria. Um, we have an outdoor um, kitchen area and um, gathering area on the right um, that you can see. Um, these are, this is the material board that's part of our um, submittal. So it's showing you some of the 
character, the plant material um, that we're using. Uh, the bike racks that we intend to use, those are located along um, Christie Street near the entrance to the building. Um, and then I, I wanted to kind of include some green screen um, images here because this is the kind of effect that we'll be looking to add to the building to address some of the greening issues, especially along Christie, um, where we have the problem without um, any street trees. Um, we may want to add some um, very cool uh, wall pieces as well uh, in the building, and um, I think you'll see those as a part of our next presentation. So with that. Okay. Thanks, Denise. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant, though, right now, the landscape or oh, architect? Actually, I have a question. What is the um, depth of the planters in the courtyard? Uh, the ones that are surrounding the... Um, the Tonk Court, The Patonk Court are 42 inches. Uh, they have benches on the inside that face into the Patonk Court. Uh, the, the, the planters adjacent to the units are, are 20 inches uh, with seats built into them but the um, palm trees have raised um, sections um, inside those planters to allow for more um, soil. Do you feel that the, that's sufficient root room to provide a canopy around the Patonk Court? Uh, well, yeah, I think it is, especially when we um, add, the, add the arbors into the system, because I think with the wisteria on the arbors, um, that what we're really trying to do is protect from the down view in a lot of ways, so that um, I'm asking more, uh, like, w will it actually grow? Does oh yeah, I, I think room? I think it definitely will grow. Um, um, the the plant materials that we're showing there are Japanese maples and azaras. Um, we mm -hmm. may want to add to that list as well, and I'm certainly happy to talk to you about other plant material that you think would be appropriate there. Thanks. Okay. Oh, I guess you're in charge. Okay. So, uh, um, I think Origins wants to make a presentation now. Yeah, or we would. Someone else to make a presentation? Uh, our consultants. Oh, uh, all right. Origins, Arnold and Alexander. Okay. Arnold Mamorella. Yeah. Leave it up in case there's questions. So you can just, yeah. Right. We'll give you a visual to look at. One person's coming right now. So first, let me introduce myself. My name's Arnold Mamorello with Orders Design Network. Uh, myself and, and my partner, Alexander Martinets, are principals of the firm, and we were asked by staff to help them out, like was done on the paper mill project. Let me put this over here. <laughs> and so that's what we're trying to do. We were at your last planning commission study session. And we sat in, listened, and we met with staff after that and met with the, uh, the project team on several occasions trying to sort of see how to take um, some of the input that we, we received from you and some of the staff concerns and sort of see where it could go in developing the project. I put this uh, image up here because I think we can all say that we are very uh, feel very good about this part of the project. It was developed quite a bit from the original the proportions of, of the massing really uh, improved, uh, the use of materials, the zones, the composition all improved. And so th this part of the project was really strong uh, kind of improvement we felt. There were some other areas of the project uh, that we felt improved <coughs> quite a bit. Uh, Rob mentioned some of them. For example, on the um, studio units that he turned sideways on the upper floor that pulled the roof line back, got some better solar access. That was a good help, and those ten turned out to be quite nice units. And the introduction of, some of the townhouse units, which uh,
we had seen that in the urban, in the city's d design guidelines, that was a preferred uh, type of building edge on the street for these type of projects. So we were looking at uh, some of the information out of the out of the marketplace. Um, I guess the PUD document, uh, the urban d design guidelines that you have been working on, your comments and staff comments, and kind of working those all t t together. So right now, wh where we're at is we want to sort of kind of go over a few things. And Charlie, did you have a chance to, to distribute the? Uh, yeah, I've passed out the. Uh, there's a sheet that uh, Arnold and Alexander have put together that hits on five key points that they're going to go through: the courtyard environment, the private balconies and community terraces, the park to courtyard visual connection, uh, the street level units uh, relating to the sidewalk facade and issues on Christie Avenue and the building design uh, at the 64th and Christie Corner. So Does this thing work? Yeah, yeah it, uh, you have to hold it right. It should be on. Hello? Yeah, yeah there you okay. go. Okay, a little bit easier. <laughs> so probably the thing to do is to go to the courtyard, because I think the courtyard is the one area that uh, probably we have the most comments on about the, the direction of that. And so I want to put up here first, um, this is the image of the courtyard has its design now and I want to look at this and then the kind of the plan for it and I think w this is probably the one area where we have the biggest kind of d difference in opinion with the with the, the project team of the courtyard this is a more of an open plaza d design very open uh, if you look at the plan view you will notice that let me see if I can zoom in a little here There we go. You you'll notice that the the circulation really runs all around the uh, all around the edge of that right in front of units. So we have units with their only glass that is exposed on right on the podium level to to circulation. So this was a fairly big privacy concern in terms of those units not having much privacy. Uh, you just see that they have some small planters there uh, around those. They vary from 20 inches to 40 inches, and some sort of more like pot planners there too. So there's a very open design that you see in both in plan for the circulation and then in this drawing here. Oops, I have to zoom that out there. So it's a very open kind of like a activity plaza type of um, type of environment. So we want to talk about that a little bit, and we want to talk about the sort of the, the walls of the courtyard and, and how they're turning out, and give some specific information. Uh, one thing to look at in terms of courtyards, we want to talk a little bit about the typology of the courtyard. And you'll notice here in the section view, let me zoom a little bit here, and I will try to move as fast as possible through this, but I do understand it's late. You see that the width of the courtyard is a little more than the height of the courtyard, so it's a pretty uh, tall set of walls. There's some eroding of the walls in, in certain areas to sort of pull that back, which, which helps some. But it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big courtyard, but it's also a pretty tall courtyard. So when we get to the solar access, we can talk a, a little bit more about that. Uh, just as kind of a couple comparisons, I, I, I took a shot of the, I don't know if you're familiar with the um, courtyard out again, wrong way, sorry. The New Californian Project, which is the Trader Joe's one on University Avenue. And this is a shot uh, in, in the courtyard. And you see there are four s stories. This was taken right at 1 p.m. in the middle of summer, so this is the best time for solar sort of access. So, But we just wanted to show how open the courtyard feels when it's a very open courtyard. I think their courtyard has more things than, than, than this in it. But still, it's a question of how open do you want the courtyard to feel and how much sort of a, a layering do you want, or do you want it to be a one large open space? So that's a kind of a judgment call. I think our point of view is, and again, here's really quickly, here's an image of how that lays out. They have a different, kind of a slightly different shape to the courtyard, a um, little wider, um, not as deep, but it's, it's sort of a, sort of a, kind of a, a large space between the buildings to let light in. I just wanted to real quickly say that there's an alternative vision to the, the courtyard, and that's more the traditional vision, if I can do this. And this is more the traditional vision of a courtyard. This is taken from a uh, traditional courtyard type project built in the late 20s. 
so the time is different. But there's kind of con contemporary examples, too. And you, you see in this one that the courtyard is a combination of private spaces, which you see are these gridded spaces, walled private spaces, and landscape spaces. You also see that the width of the courtyard is a little bit bigger relative to the mass of the building. And when you look at the section, you notice that the uh, uh, courtyard is much more heavily landscaped and in, in, in through here. So it's, 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 it's a much more intimate type of space with heavier landscaping. And it's actually part of a series of courtyards as people move through the courtyard to get into the unit. So the courtyard is part of the, part of the project which you move through to get to the unit. In this case, with these newer projects, they tend to become more of sort of um, in, an, in addition to the primary s circulation system. Now, I don't know how good this picture is going to come out, but basically you see inside that courtyard, you see a much heavier sort of landscape treatment that provides some more intimacy. And this is with the lower building. Also, really quickly, you see, you know, you know, the landscape and the building walls kind of come together. I was kind of interested in the green, the, the, green, the green screen ideas, and we'll come back to that as one of the ways to kind of create more of a landscape zone. So what we're kind of recommending is that that the courtyard, and here's another quick example of, 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 of a courtyard where it's more lush and varied in its, in its uh, sort of series of spaces and forms. So what we're recommending is a couple things. Uh, well, let me start here real, real quick. We, we are recommending that this dark green is, we're not, we didn't, do any design to the courtyard. We're recommending that some private patios be used uh, on the courtyard to provide a, another layer. These units here could use some additional privacy and some private patios with some walls of a, of a varied height would help to provide a little bit of enclosure, a little bit of privacy, and places for landscape to go against. It still leaves a lot of room in the court for other activities and circulation. So that's one of the things that we're recommending will help this project in two ways. One is it will help the courtyard experience but also it will provide more private amenities for some of the units. So that's one recommendation. The other recommendation for the, for the courtyard, or the second of three really, is it seems that although there's been some improvements on the solar access, generally these type of projects don't have very good solar access. I mean, they just don't, they don't function very well in this way. And because of the court has been left in the orientation that it is, I think it's incumbent to sort of look at how you can kind of chip away at the upper levels of it to let some more light in, especially for south, southwest light. Uh, and so what, looking at this drawing, these red lines indicate the difference between where the line of the roof lines are now, which is the red lines, and where they could be dropped down. So this is just a little cut and paste exercise here by reducing parapets and changing a couple unit con conditions. Actually, only one unit gets changed here, uh, removing that one unit. Uh, and we'll get to that in a, in a minute about the upper deck. So we're looking at letting more light in where it can get into the courtyard to improve that. Also, bringing down the scale of the courtyard a little from the inside. And the last point here is just a point v verbally is to look at, um, you know, we just sort of felt, talking with staff, that the courtyard uh, elevations did seem a little commercial, uh, and maybe there could be a little more of a r residential scale to them, elements that are, are of a more of a r residential scale. So that's something that we would, uh, you know, like to, to bring up for your consideration. So I want to move past the courtyard, because I know time is mo moving on, and go to the second area that, that we want to talk about that is rather related. Mm -hmm. And this is the terraces and the decks. So in this area, again, one of the goals was to try to get more private terraces in the project and to use the terraces that we have better. So you notice that, again, some private terraces as part of the courtyard for the lower units. And you also notice that uh, this is on the podium level. There's opportunities to put some more terraces on some of these units on the uh, upper level units here that, that to our understanding, don't exist. So this is this darker green color. This is on the podium level. So there's opportunities selectively around the project to put a few more terraces in. On the upper floor, on the upper floor, 
one of the recommendations, and I know that the, um, the, the product developer does not prefer this recommendation because it, it, would, it would lose a unit, but we can come back to that in a minute, would be to open up, remove a studio unit at this, lo at this lo location. The south sun is coming from this direction. It would let a lot of light in. And we don't have any roof terraces. There was a discussion at the Planning Commission before about having roof terraces. There are no roof terraces on the roof. And in lieu of that, there's an idea of maybe putting a, a small communal terrace up there, big enough to get some, some use, get sun more times of the year, not limited times. So the main courtyard will be dark certain times of the year. This would be light most of the year. And that would allow you know, a little more light into the, the um, the courtyard and, a, and another usable space for the many units that don't have terraces. So that was a, 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 a recommendation that we went over with the staff. And of course, there might be a few other places to add s small terraces. I want to quickly show the, that new California project that one of the things that they do have is they do have extensive roof terraces, which when I went to the building was really one of the nicest features. They had lots of roof terraces lots of different activities, and people were actually using those where the courtyard people weren't. So uh, it's sort of like you're trying to make it work the best you can, but having some sort of roof terrace or terrace high on the building might be, might be uh, very helpful to the overall quality of the project. Let me go through the one more of the issues re related to the project courtyard and podium is the entrance to the pedestrian entrance. And this is another area which is pretty mm -hmm. difficult pro part of the project because what you'll see is this is the elevation and you s notice right, let me use a pen here, and you notice r right here is where the entrance is. So you have a 10 foot wide stair and then you have the, the balcony off the recreation room and there's the, u the unit ab above that. And what you notice is that um, it's pretty closed off it's not very big relative to, to the facade. And while from certain vantage points, you might get a view up there. From most vantage points, the view will be, will be kind of blocked. Here is how it is in section right now. It, this is, this is the, the sectional view through there. So you see a person down here looking up. They have a pretty closed kind of angle of, of view into that. So they will get some little views, but not maybe as much as has the initial comments that we got from the Planning Commission of tr trying to open up that connection. So let me back this up just a bit. So the recommendation here is to essentially remove that, that, that unit on the floor above the podium level. It's a, it's a studio unit. Uh, the idea of a glass bridge was talked about, and actually when we studied it more, we didn't think that was a good idea either. Uh, and so just an open bridge under there would be protected from rain would be a, a, a better solution because it would allow more for more views through the, than a glass bridge. The other thing is uh, changing the stair and, and terrace at the rec room where right now on the lower floor there's a um, mechanical room down there that can be widened out. Right now you have a 10 foot stair. We're talking about widening it to about 17 plus feet, 17, 18 feet and using a stair with some planners on it to make a more inviting type of entry into there. And pushing the uh, terrace off the rec room over, making it a little deeper. I, we, as, as we studied it, we found that this walk around terrace really didn't seem to really be needed. You can come f from the terrace out, to, to, from the rec room out to a terrace. And so it seemed like it was a better use of space to make that the entry and leave the terrace off the rec room, make it a little more of a rectangular space, it would be a little easier to use. So th the big issue here is, is, is losing the unit. That, that's the big issue here, widening the, and making it a more gracious access and, and then narrowing this other terrace and making that terrace off the rec room a really you know, usable terrace for a, a gathering. So we're making those recommendations after talking with staff about that. Two more areas to, to talk about. I, I know we can't really get to everything. Um, the issue of the townhomes along the street, we uh, initially recommended putting townhomes on, on all three sides, and they felt that that was too many townhomes, so they went with townhomes along 
along just, just to Christie's side. But in the development of those townhomes, they really got kind of small. And there's a quarter on the back. So, so you see the unit plans. And this line here is the line of the building overhang. So you've got nine feet from the overhang back to, to the unit, which maybe is a little too far, provides a lot of shadow. And you notice that the actual space inside the unit is getting pretty small. These are not that big of townhomes. They're like, I don't know, 750, 75 square feet, something like that. I'm not sure. The, the, but uh, someone that, and the bedroom is really quite, quite small too with a closet. So there's a lot of concerns that we have with the townhome. So what, we do, what we're doing is making a couple recommendations here. Now the basic recommendation is, okay, this, this actually can be seen pretty well, is you see where, the, where this red line is here? That's the existing wall of, of the um, units. We're actually thinking it would be better to bring those, those out about two and a half feet on the lower floor and about a foot further on the upper floor. What that does is that it's still set back in the frame, but it makes those units a lot, more, a lot bigger where those allowing for furniture arrangement and things like that. It's just a little more gracious unit. Uh, allows for a little more storage space and closets, which are pretty limited in, in these units. And it still allows a, a pretty generous stoop and stairs. And we actually thought that um, doing a raised planter really across the front and then a deeper planter on the, str on the street side at the ground level would work quite well. And one of the reasons is, as you know, on this, this street, they can't put street trees. So these, the value of these planters on the street are not quite as good, but maybe they'd be a little more if they were focused right across from the entry, so it's more of a focal point and there's some rhythm to this, this walkway. It's still a, a, a deep walkway, but it sort of focuses more on the entry of the units and at a street level experience. So the next image is the privacy image. This is more or less the current situation. I know they're talking about a planner, but we didn't really know what type of planner they were talking about there. This is basically their section with a little planner added there because they have the window being very low. So what we're proposing is you go with a little higher planner so that there is some, and with plants and the higher wall, there's some visual break for privacy. Uh, I think that uh, that's something that you know, most people in the units will, ha will happen is we have one of many projects uh, where if they're near the ground floor, they just constantly keep their curtains closed. So essentially, you, they get no, the only way to get privacy is to eliminate the light. So that seems like a bad trade-off for us if you can find another way to do it. So it's a higher planner there. So quickly, the elevations on that. This is the proposed elevation now. And there's many ways to do an elevation, so this is not the only way, but just basically on the floor plan changes, this zone here, this concrete column, the concrete column, really focusing more on the entry in, into the units that you go into, and a little higher planter wall here, this is actually five feet from the ground. It tells you an idea of the scale of the overall building. With five feet looks rather low, but uh, it will provide privacy for these, these units a little better, but you still have a lot of focus, and the, the, this kind of between these two columns, it's really more at a scale of the street as opposed to where it was here. It's more at the scale of the building. It's part of this bigger rhythm. So it's really kind of defining this lower zone a little bit more. One more, a couple more quick things here is at the upper zone, you have many opportunities to sort of improve the units. Uh, at this uh, area here, we just, they had a taller sort of section here. And we just said, well, why not bring the windows up at that living room? there, give them some higher windows on those up, up, upper units, kind of like a, a light monitor like what was done on paper mill. And that way you're sort of getting some interior quality out of that in addition to the exterior look of the building. So there's some little areas like that that could be in, in improved and that's one recommendation there. So one last thing to, to, to talk about and, and then we'll be done with this unless you have comments or questions for me. So this orange corner here, um, we like orange. Personally, it's, it's my favorite color. <laughs> uh, our concerns, though, that maybe it's a little bit of a heavy-handed sort of element. This is, it, it is visible from the freeway. It's actually quite visible. And the other thing that, that happens from this corner is you have great bay views. You have great bay views. 
Now, if you look at the elevations really quickly, it gives you a different way of looking at it. This is the 64 side. This is the Christie side. You see on the 64 side, you get kind of a big blank wall, which, you know, looks not so bad in, 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 the, in, in the perspective, but then you get to the elevation. It's like, oh, wow, maybe not so great. So what we really thought was, a lot, with a lot of these decisions, if you sort of combine unit, unit decisions, here, this is a two-bedroom unit, a more of a glazed corner that really takes advantage of the view out to the bay. There's, those are the only units with really g great views. By eliminating the, the, the heavy collar and tr column and treating it really more like these other corners of the building. So you're picking up on some basic language of the building. I think there's a room for some improvement there. So we have a quick sketch that just shows p some potential. And it's not nearly as nice as their beautiful renderings. Everyone knows that. But just by opening up those corners and trying to introduce some of the uh, lowering the scale of this and maybe bringing in this ceramic tile like is on the back of the building, using those elements, repeating those elements, kind of it's kind of in the sort of imagery that they had, but maybe it's a little kind of scaled down and a little more friendly to the units in, in terms of the view. So this is one area that we think is worth some more study. Um, we're not sure if it's going to stand the, the test of time very well. And it's really, it's really the part of the building that you will see from the freeway. So I think that's probably a good place to stop. OK. Does anybody have any questions for Origins or the consultant? No? I think we're going to get a response from uh, yeah. the applicant, Denise. Thank you very much. Oh, I just want to make, make one quick comment. As yeah. far as the two units are lost, the two studio units, uh, you know, I think it could be studied the ways to, to get one or two of those units back. I'm not sure, but that's something that we can meet and, and, and go over with them. Uh, and as far as the 190-unit minimum requirement, I think staff might be able to comment on, is there really a, a requirement to do 190 units for the state? I haven't heard that before, but that's something that you might ask ask about. Well, I think Denise will know a little bit more about that. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to this or do you want to just, just move it? Good evening. Good evening. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Can I this on? Is it working? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm Denise Pinkston. I'm a partner with TMG Partners. Uh, we're the project sponsor. And I, given the lateness of the hour and the amount of detail we've had to go into this evening in our second study session, I thought I'd start with a bit of good news, just take a quick refresher. Um, as you know, the overall marketplace redevelopment was the first lead uh, for a neighborhood development, platinum rated neighborhood plan in the country, and still remains one of a handful of those projects in the US. We got the platinum rating from the U.S. Green Building Council uh, because of the site planning and overall orientation to how development should be done in, in the urban infill environment. A lot of those things don't show up on a final, on an FDP. A lot of them are relate to the programming and management of the buildings. Some of the things that were commented on in the staff report are actually in our introductory verbiage, which we handed to you at the last commission meeting, which is the building is LEED certifiable at the silver level or could be green point rated, but that's not subject to design review. It'll have green MEP systems. It's part of the overall marketplace, so it's got TMP. We've got very low parking ratios compared to other products in the market, really high bike parking ratios. And we did things with the architecture that you wouldn't find in this kind of product. If you go to any podium style apartment building in the East Bay, you're not going to find visual openings from the private garden in the middle of the building out to the public street. So we did a lot of things in the building consistent with the master plan. It's hard to appreciate when you're just looking at a, at a section or an elevation. And we're excited because it's the first part of this master plan. In part because we're starting the overall project, we applied for yet another potential interesting project, which is the state catalyst program. The state of California set aside grant funds to be available to projects that would start soon, and it's the name catalyst, uh, and provide an example statewide of good green building. And we just found out this week that our project has been 
uh, designated as a gold state catalyst project, one of only four in the state with the gold rating, and the only one in the Bay Area other than Mission Bay to achieve that rating. So we're really happy to be in that category, and we have a lot of momentum to get this building done in an economy where nobody's doing anything. Uh, and the state's recognizing that momentum with additional potential grant funds and with the $5 million state brownfield cleanup grant, which requires that we sign the grant in October. Uh, signing the grant according to the city's preferred schedule means we have an OPA approved by the city council by October. They don't want to do an OPA without the FDP being approved. So that means that has to be done in October at the council, which means it has to be done by you in September. So I regret the schedule. Uh, Origins has suggested having more design meetings and more study sessions. After tonight, we have one week to turn around a final submittal to you so your staff can write it up. It can be in your packet. So I'd, what I would like to do tonight at midnight is to um, let you know we just got the staff report on Tuesday. So there's a lot of things that were brought up. We thought we were done three weeks ago. We spent a lot of time and money and long nights redesigning the project. So I was a little surprised to get that level of additional commentary on the project, but we quickly today and yesterday try to respond. We'll let you know what we can accept. We'll let you know what we still have a problem with, and we'd like to know what, what things we'd like to have a dialogue with you about, because we're open to a number of solutions, and if you give us some direction, we'll be able to bring it back to you in a way that uh, works the best for all of us. So with a little bit of good news and a tight timeline, um, let's just launch into talking about what Origins laid out. Um, of uh, the recommendations that were made by Origins, a lot of them are fine with us. So the idea that on the ground level townhouses, we take a, a plain wall and replace it with glazing to increase light, we're okay with that at the ground level. We're okay making the townhomes deeper uh, and making those units larger. It'll slightly reduce the amount of variance between the base building wall and where the townhouses are so that two-story element won't read quite as strongly, but it'll still read and it'll make a better unit. So we're, we're happy to accept that. We'll play with the 64th Street corner to try and lighten that up a little bit, but the exact drawing that Origins drew, we can't build structurally. We've already got a very expensive storefront glazing system so that all those units have floor-to-ceiling bay view glass. That's the kind of feature you only see in a for-sale condo project in the Bay Area. It's very unusual to get it in a rental project. We did it on the bay view corner. We can't take that glass line and wrap it around a corner without really expensive structural systems, otherwise the building won't hold itself up. So we get the idea, but the design won't work, so we'll play with that and we'll come back with something that is, provided that's okay with you, in that direction, but, but not quite what they suggested. Um, we can add some additional balconies. <laughs> One of the locations that was mentioned in the written staff report, although that was changed again for tonight, was some additional balconies on the 64th Street elevation on the fourth floor. We can add some more. Going to 50% balconies in these units will be completely out of character with what's done in the rental market in the East Bay. So we, I will show you some locations where we can add a few more, but we only want to add a few more and, and still be able to build the project for what we're able to accomplish economically. Um, we're happy adding dividers to the shared terraces where we can add more privacy on some of those long shared balconies. We really left, we just showed you the space in the plans. We're happy to program it with some pots and plants to make them more private usable spaces for those residents. Um, we are already starting to study how we can add additional green screens at the ground level of the building to accomplish two things. One. Commissioner Kimberly pointed out that this is a green building, but when you drive by it, it just looks like any other apartment building, which is sort of a, a lost opportunity, particularly since where we start with is, hey, we're a green project and we're doing all these great things. So I think that's the right idea, and we, Jeff showed you some imagery for how we can accomplish that. So we'll come back to you with some additional green screens. So when you drive by the building or you walk by the building, you go, oh, yeah. That's, a, that's different, that's a green building. So we'll bring that back to you. Um, and then finally, we're happy to incorporate more private spaces at the podium level if that's desired by the commission. We redrew the podium for you based on what we thought you said last time and what they think you said was different than what we thought. So you guys have to tell us what you want at the podium. Uh, we're happy to program it either way. 
I will say, though, that the vernacular of a 1920s bungalow project in Los Angeles is not the vernacular of a mid-rise apartment project in the, in the current decade. So we have a fundamental disagreement on the design principle of a podium garden. That being said, some private spaces that are more privatized for the residents is fine by us. I would also suggest if you want to see images of our vision of the podium, that you walk through any of the podiums designed by Jeff Miller in Emeryville. Because that's what we're looking for. The kind of lushness and care that Jeff brings to his designs is not like the podium images that they showed you from that project in Berkeley. So it's sometimes hard to see in a plan what it's going to look like. Jeff's podiums won't look like the images that they show to you. And we can, if you want to get into it, we can go through it. But he designed our project, um, the, town, the condo conversion right on Harlan Street. You can walk in and see his multi-wall fountain. Again, that's a for sale project, but it's very inviting and lush. He designed the Age Song apartment or uh, senior living, and he also designed the more recent project that Rick Holiday did near City Hall. And I'm sure he can give you a long resume of his lovely podium gardens. Uh, there are some things that we don't want to do. We'd really like you not to tell us to do these things. And, and the reasons are they're either highly costly for a minimal effect in the building. We've probably added a million dollars in cost to this building in the last month. And we've eliminated three units, each of which are worth about $350,000. So we added a million dollars of cost. We took away a million dollars of revenue. In high times, that would be irrelevant. But right now, that's a significant portion of what makes the project work. So we can't keep doing that. So we will, do, we will do things that we can, but we can't keep making really expensive gestures that have a marginal impact on the desirability and the livability of the project. So let's talk about what some of those are. The 190 units is where we thought we were with staff when we met with them three weeks ago and we thought we had a deal. Now granted, they didn't say we had a deal, but we had to redesign the building and we have submittal deadlines with the state. We told the state that was our project because we had to. That's how the 190 unit got locked in. From the state's perspective, the city's driving the number of units down. The state thought they were getting a 217 unit project. They thought they were getting 34 BMR units for their $5 million grant, and it keeps ratcheting the other way. It's, you know, it started at 195, now it's at, when it was at 193, now it's at 190. So we told the state 190, it went to the state CPFC board. Very hard to take that back now for, with the state. So we're asking that you leave the unit count at 190 units, and that we look for ways to accomplish your objectives that don't result in the net loss of units. Um, secondly, there's been a lot of, we believe that the unit plans that we've presented you with um, are largely consistent with what's done in the market. Entering through a kitchen, we showed you five different apartment unit plans, including unit plans in Emeryville with projects that are well occupied that you enter through the kitchen line. So we really think that that should not be an issue that we continue to discuss. Um, we, I'm kind of going through here, let's see. Um, on the Christie Avenue elevation, Origins brought up tonight the notion of adding windows to the top register of the building above the doorways to add more light to those units. That fractures the roof diaphragm there and has significant structural and cost implications. It makes it building more difficult to build, so we would like not to add windows in that particular <coughs> location. Um, if we were to widen the flow through planters, as Origins has suggested, we would either have to narrow the private porches or narrow the sidewalks. There's no extra space at the ground plane of the building. And each of the planters is already at the minimum dimension that will function. Um, we also don't think those planters should be five feet tall. That's a planter that's as tall as I am, less two inches. And that would be a very hard and imposing surface to put on the public sidewalk or in, in that public realm, it would, it would prevent any communication at all. Rather than having bigger permanent structures, we think we should go with taller plants, which can grow and you can see through and it allows light to go through it. So we don't recommend the modification to the planters that's suggested by Origins. Um, let's see, I'm trying to make sure I've got everything else here. And they're widening the um 
townhouse units did you mention that? um we, we're we'll bringing it we'll in. actually widen we'll bring them out to the street a little bringing bit. them out yeah, yeah. We'll, and, in and, depth in, in the depth yeah in we'll depth. make those slightly longer um let's talk now then about things where we could really use some direction from you and some more dialogue with you this evening if you could help us obviously the whole area of the building terrace is subject to discussion when our architect presented this portion of the building, he pointed out that this is a double height ceiling already. So what you get by removing yet another unit, I think is minimal and affects very few people, but to us, it's a huge impact. Um, so rather than do that, what we suggest, if they think this terrace area, and we also disagree that the terrace here should only be accessed through the rec room. In my mind, particularly now that the building division has said this can no longer be a building entry because of ADA unless we put in a third elevator core or a lift, neither of which, both of which are economically difficult and a lift would be somewhat unsightly in that location. We suggest we leave the stair where it is and activate the stair by having this terrace outdoors. So when you're standing out here and you're looking up, you see outdoor area and you see outdoor area. You don't see a building wall here. So it's open, you see that the wraparound um, fence or guardrail for the terrace, balcony rail, and you see the stair, which has a gate here. To have a wider opening with a big gate behind it, to me, it is adding a lot of space to an activity that is essential. You have to have a building exit, but not necessarily terribly desirable, whereas an outdoor usable patio terrace is a, is a highly desirable activity. I also think, I disagree with them, that it should only, access should only through the recreation room. If you allow people to be out here I'm going to draw my plans here. And they want to go out and see the park. They can walk out and see the park. If somebody's in the rec room watching the, the big game on the big TV, they're not necessarily going to want to go through that activity room and disrupt the activity in order to get to the outdoor usable public space. So I think there needs to be this exterior access to this terrace, which cantilevers out over here. If the terrace isn't big enough, I suggest rather than adding, you know, losing a unit to fix that, just cut it back in dimension. This gets west or south facing light, so it's going to be lit most of the day. Even if it's under the envelope of the building above, you can cut it back and make it wider. So this would now become the dimension of the terrace, as wide as some of the studio units. And you have more usable area and you maintain this outdoor access. If you want to make sure that that isn't impeded, you could lose that door. So now you have a locked gate here. You have stair rails all the way around. It's visible through the room. We haven't lost any units. You've done the programming and made it more open the way you want it to do. And it's, it's usable for everybody, not just people who feel comfortable walking through the party in the rec room that day or whatever else might be going on there. I also think we do have some opportunities here to add balconies, which Origin suggested at that terrace level or a podium level. So we're happy to look at that next time. Um, but what would be helpful to hear from you is whether you prefer the rec room wall to go to the stair or not, if, if we can leave it back here and accept some of these suggestions. Um, and if you feel strongly about, to me, this lost unit doesn't really worth it. The, the place that Origin suggested losing a unit, I think it's this studio unit up here. Thank you. Suggested losing this studio unit. Um, the purpose of that is to make this less massive and to allow this to be an outdoor usable terrace. Um, it, it, because of where it is in the project, it's in the shadowest, the sh most shaded part of the building. It's actually better and more effective for, for usability to make this bigger. And we can make that bigger and not use, lose a unit. So uh, if you're looking for interesting usable outdoor space, nick that building. You know, nick the wall of that, let this be more active and outdoor, rather than getting rid of a unit that makes a perfectly good location for a unit, but a somewhat dark location for an outdoor sun terrace. So if you're, that's what we would like you to do tonight. Um, and we'd like you to give us some feedback about this, this terrace design area just in um, conclusion so we can try to resolve that. Uh, the only other thing that really is a question of policy for the city is this sidewalk width. We now have this sidewalk at six feet. 
Last time we were here, you guys <coughs> wanted seven feet to seven and a half. The only way to get that is to move the street over. Th this is now a driveway, right? It's the marketplace's driveway, and it's designed at 22 feet, which is the minimum the public works would have set for a city road. You can have a 20-foot private driveway, however, and still be consistent with the city code. The reason the public works director wanted it to be 22 feet is that ultimately one day it's supposed to be a city street. The way you could accomplish that is ultimately one day move it over two feet that way. That way. <laughs> that way today you get your sidewalk width of seven feet and you live with a somewhat undersized driveway for a while until the park edge is completed and you can move the roadway over. So that's what we would recommend, but that's really a dialogue between the, the commission, the policymakers on staff, and the public works director about what direction you want to go. We're comfortable doing it either way, but you guys need to weigh in. You've got to tell us what you want and, and you know, tell the public works department how you'd like that to be viewed. So if you could advise us on the terrace and the street widths, and if you can accept what we can accept and not accept, then that we would be very happy. And we look forward to your comments and additional thoughts and suggestions. And we look forward to bringing back to you the results of tonight's meeting. Um, we'll be redesigning next week, and we'll have the submittal in by the Tuesday after Labor Day. Thank you, Denise. Does anybody have any questions for Denise or Origins or staff? I'm going to open the public comment. Is there anybody here to speak? Oh, look, there is somebody. Speak on this item. We'll give you three minutes and five seconds. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. So, uh, John Sherman, I uh, would definitely support the terrace um, should be accessed <laughs> only from the rec center, and I think that could open up the stairs. I'd like to see the stairs, the width of the stairs, uh, be much wider to open up the space, bring going up to the podium. So you like the origins idea, but Denise's idea is sort of okay too. Denise's no, idea, but I bad. think origins of. of He's saying. The, make it make the terrace accessible only from the the rec room, and that would allow extra width of the stairs. So we can have a double wide stair. I see. Okay. So, so that, and I definitely support the the road diet for the driveway in, and then sometime in the future, if it needs to expand, take it out of the other parcel on the south side. Um, the other thing that I was a little concerned about your design on Christie was the in and out of the, the street. And I think it's really important that we maintain our seven and a half foot clear space because this is a, a highly trafficked area with people walking dogs usually in, in groups. So I think it's really important to maintain that. No <laughs> dialogues back and forth. I Go ahead, really, Mr. Sherman. I really avoid that. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool, but it's not practical for people walking their dogs and walking in groups. Um, and whatever we can do to make Christie the green street that it is, so you've got some, some creative ideas there, I would um, highly encourage that. But otherwise, I think you've come up with some good things that you can work out between the two of you. Great. Thanks. Thank you, John. Oh, one other thing is um, there is a bus that... 63rd and Christie is now becoming kind of a transit hub and there's the J trans bay bus that comes back from the commute hours every night dumps off a boatload of people at the, this location wow. and in the future it'll be even more so I think there should be some sort of accommodation made in the streetscape the sidewalk that will accommodate that bus and kind of encourage that transit use what street was that on again, Christy? Christy. Okay. Basically, the driveway and, and Christy. Based out there. Okay. Any more public comments? Seeing none, close public comment. Bring it back to commission. Well, I was really not impressed with the consultant's uh, suggestions at all. I thought the uh, adding balconies is, is really ridiculous. Uh, all you need to do is drive around anywhere in Emeryville and look at the balconies and you see nobody on them. Occasionally a plant at Watergate where every unit has a balcony, a number of people have enclosed them to make them usable rooms and they don't mean anything. As far as that uh, monumental stairway coming off 63rd Street, I think that's a waste of time. 
it's not a stairway. You can't use it. It's locked. And um, I think the only idea is is that you can, oh, look up inside from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a usable, uh, meaningful thing for somebody that lives in the building. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that all glass corner at 64th and Christie looks very dramatic, and I'm sure there's a view out there. But it, anybody that knows anything about architecture knows that it requires a much more extensive structural system to make it happen. Um, you know, I think the improvements they, that uh, they've made to these plans since our last meeting have been terrific. You know, there's little details to be changed, but I just don't understand these consultants' comments other than perhaps he felt he had to say something. At any rate, that's my feeling about it. Art, do you have any comments? Since you were at the last study session now. I have a few comments. Um, I felt that the project still lacked a level of detail for the pedestrian experience that could be done in a number of ways, and I think uh, Origins attempted to address that, especially on Christie. Um, although the planter uh, Denise was talking about is indeed five foot tall, there was also another planter in front that would provide another layer of planting. So I'm wondering why couldn't we just have the sidewalk uh, and curb have no planting and have all the planting against the building to provide a more private experience for the townhomes within. Also, in the courtyard, um, I, I was thinking that the possibility, since indeed it is such a tall building and there is limited solar access, at, although you've done wonderful things to increase that. It seems um, that it may be a more interesting, inviting, and edifying experience to make it more almost like uh, with, with, say, palm trees and small, smaller Japanese maples, make it uh, like a canopied green lush place. So, um, it, we could, again, have the areas for the uh, homes with green screens that are private, and at the same time, uh, if for the folks living above, they would be looking down almost on a forest, and the people who are walking underneath, it would be light with the, some, you know, as Japanese maples are not particularly dense, uh, you would have the sort of entire experience of walking underneath. And it, this, uh, I think, would be a more useful uh, experience for all the, all the tenants uh, than a patent court, because it's more likely folks are just going to walk through or look out their window down at it. Um, also, let's see. The, the corner on 64th, I kind of agree with Buzz. It's kind of an afterthought at this point. Um, I'm not really sure what we're accomplishing. I do feel that it does need to have some presence, but I'm not sure it's working the way it is. Um, the way it's designed or the, the way, way it's, Origin should The way it's, uh, I don't think Origins had anything to say about that corner, did they? Did yeah, you? Did. They completely yeah, redesigned glass. it. And More glass. Wrap around glass. The and six. Tile. And showed some tile on it. Um, That's okay. Okay. The orange corner. No, I'm not talking about the orange corner. Oh, you're, you're not? talking about the orange corner, right? No. Oh, no. Are you talking? I'm talking about the corner on the park. Did I say? You said 63rd. Oh, sorry. 63rd. <laughs> sorry. Okay. 63rd. And is that what you were talking about, Buzz? No, I was talking about 63rd. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I'm talking about 63rd. <laughs> um, it, it is also an important corner, and, and uh, I agree with Denise. It's, it's going to be difficult to have that much glass and on the other side. Um, those are the main points that I believe. Uh, the, I, I also 
again, I wanted to reiterate that I feel like there could be more detail on the pedestrian level, uh, not just on the street, but even inside the building uh, to create a, a more personal experience. Thank you. Stephen? I think the uh, developer's done a great job, and they've come a long way since the last time I saw the project. And, and by the way, we have a Padon court, and uh, it's, it's used. Yeah, people are actually out there botching away, so I like it. Uh, the orange corner looks a little heavy, but I think you're getting there, you know? Uh, I'm not totally opposed to it. But I understand what Bud is saying about the balconies. I don't know if that looks like an afterthought. What do you, do, were you opposed to the balconies, especially here? No, the, we're, we're typically. adding even more balconies. Yeah. You know, I think they, they help architecturally break up the facade. But, you know, that's all they're doing. They're never going to be used. They're not big enough to be used? No. Okay. I mean, it's, even if they're bigger, if you drive around any city with buildings with balconies, you never see anybody on the balcony. Yeah. The, the courtyard looks a lot better also. It looks like there's some... Um, interesting gathering spaces and, and spaces where you can sit and, and just you know, search the web and do your thing. So I, I kind of like where you're going. Yeah, I, I think the project looks uh, great, a, a lot better. And um, I like the warehouse effects of the massing. I like the bulkhead roof. Uh, you know, the more uh, exposed cement you have, I know the pillars are exposed. There's a lot of exposed cement on the podium. If we're going to go green screen, maybe you can take some of the cladding off and, and still have exposed uh, cement, especially along um, Christie. Um, I don't like the high planters. Every time high planters come up, we talk about glass house. It reminds me of Jim and the high planters. And um, they do screen uh, the units, uh, and they give you great privacy, but they create this wall and the pedestrian experience is gone. And even if it's terraced back, it's still a big uh, planter uh, wall, a concrete wall. And um, I just don't think it's, I think taller plants will work better. And if the green screens go in, great. Um, one of the, you know, I, I liked a few of the ideas from Origins, the, the corner element, the orange 64th element, you could play around with that. I, I like that it's bold, I like that it sticks out. Obviously, you can see it from the freeway, um, and it's going to stick out. It's going to be the hey, there's that that Emeryville building because it looks like an this looks like an Emeryville building, and it's um, we're putting the there there. You know, some people say oh, that looks so Emeryville, but hey, at least they're saying it looks like Emeryville, and doesn't you know you don't hear people saying hey, it looks like Hayward, it looks like Vallejo. No offense, to all the Hayward and Vallejo people talking, but we got a we got a there there, and we have a look and. And uh, it's hard to get away from it, especially if you keep using Kava and everybody else. Um, I digress. Uh, I agree with Buzz on the, on the uh, patios are small. They're not that usable. It's nice to have somewhere to stand outside. Um, I don't think that we can get rid of units. So I, I hope that you can redesign that entry up from the park, um, which I agree, 20 foot. 20-foot uh, road, wider sidewalk. We'll deal with the wider road later, if that's okay. Um, whoever makes a motion here. And, um, but that, there needs to be some work there. It looks dark, and even with the three-dimensional drawing, you're kind of going up there. It's just this big, dark stair to nowhere. But there, you know, awesome bridges that are going across, all that glazing. It's looking all this light and, and the... Uh, rendering where you're looking south in the courtyard. I mean, it's exposed. It's great. You're right. I build rental apartments. This doesn't look like a rental apartment. It looks like a beautiful condo. And so you're putting a lot of elements into it that are, are really uh, awesome. And so take some of those origin thoughts, but stick with your main idea. Obviously, you're a great architect and you're doing a good job. But that, something's got to happen there. Centering the door, maybe the staircase is wider. Um, but we don't, I don't want you to lose a unit. You can't lose a unit. I realize uh, unit counts are really important for funding. And I don't think you can get to a, uh, it's an apartment building having roof decks and everything. It's just, it's, you know, getting the elevator up there, ADA, all that stuff. It's just not, that's not the, what this project is. Maybe the condo portion of the PUD will, will give us some nice roof decks. Um, 
Courtyard experience, you know, the whole thing could be a lot more organic. I agree. I don't. Maybe some people use the pedant courts, or they call it bocce or whatever. Uh, I like the organic idea. I mean, the, I went to visit that Trader Joe's uh, University project. I mean, it is beautiful. God, they put a lot of money into that thing. It's gorgeous. It's incredible, really. Um, you're not going to get there, but, um, and I appreciate the landscape architect. I've seen his work. It's great work. Um, so a little more organic. I don't need private patios. I live at a place where there's no landscaping, and the courtyard's about as big as this. There's none. Everybody puts their own landscaping out, and the 100 people that live there absolutely love it, that everyone's got their own little thing going on, and, everyone, it's, and, and, and it brings the community together. So you start building walls, creating little patios for one-bedroom apartments, that those people in that one-bedroom apartment are not a part of that community. That's just the way it is. So I like what I, I know you came away from that. You had private patios. The commission told you to take them away. Now it started, started telling you to take it back. So I think just staying organic, keeping the walls down, trying more, more plants. I like the idea that canopies can start in there. So Japanese maples, I love too. So, you know, getting some uh, uh, woody trees in there is good. So, Did, Denise, do you feel like that's giving you some direction? Can I, can I say oh, so? Yeah, of course. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Maybe because I'm not an architect, as Buzz is, I agree with most of the recommendations made by our consultant. I think most of them improve the project. I particularly like the three that, that I will concentrate on. I, I think the stairway, I agree with John, the stairway on 63rd Street must, must be wider. I mean, it, it, it needs a much more, a greater visual access to the courtyard. So I, I would definitely be in favor of widening the stairway and, sh and narrowing the terrace, as it was suggested. The second thing is, uh, I think in the courtyard, I like the idea of having private space. I mean, I, I don't think I'd like living in a unit where people are walking up and, d and down in front of my unit. I happen to favor the five-foot uh, planners for the same reason. If I lived on Christie Street, I'd keep my blinds closed all the time. So I, I, I think that's a, that's a plus. And the last point uh, is I like the idea of creating that common terrace. Was it on the third or fourth floor where it would get sunlight all the time? Because I believe that that courtyard is quite narrow and will be uh, in shade most of the time. So creating that upper level common terrace, I think, is a great idea. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Oh, I didn't comment on that upper terrace, but I thought it was absolutely useless. It's very small. Uh, it, uh, no, that's it's, what makes a ball game. It, it's also very <laughs> windy, <laughs> and so I don't think it would be used much. So there you got two sides of that. But um, I think Origin um, suggested uh, uh, one larger terrace, but then you suggested maybe we could get a terrace uh, around uh, on the south facade, right? So, you know, maybe we can get that terrace and Art can go over there and have a cocktail. Um, does that answer seem, seem to put you in a direction? And of course, we're available in the next week as you design this thing and get it back in. Um, I guess I had one last yeah. question about the um, east side of the project and the choice of, uh, I guess you couldn't really call them trees because they're bamboo. Was, is that because it's a flow-through planter and there's not, you're not able to get a larger scale tree in that area? Uh, because it's a, a narrow space, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. putting a tree, you know, there are narrow growing trees that we could put there. Um, sure. We could plant it with birch or something like that that might grow up. But, um, you know, I'd be happy to talk to you about other species, like I said. But I, I, the point of it was is that this is a tall, narrow mm -hmm. growing plant <coughs> that would be good for those kind of planters, and um, that's why we selected it. I just feel for all the folks staring at the parking lot all day. <laughs> on that side. Well, I think, uh, I think we're screening a lot of the parking lot. I mean, 
Oh, oh you mean from, from the units? From side. the units, yeah. Um, I well, don't I don't know how we're going to actually, in, in a four foot, yeah. you know, it, wide space that's right up against the building, create a screen to a parking lot that ex extends hundreds of feet out sure, from the building. Sure. So, there you have it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I could use a little clarification, though, because you asked, you know, do we have some direction? And I think we got, like, really two different directions <laughs> yeah. on the courtyard. So, you know, we want to come back with something that people are going to like. And, yeah. I, I, you know, <coughs> I don't know if the line's going to be drawn on that or, or what, but, uh, you know, I, I, we're going to try to accommodate both sides of that <coughs> argument and see if we can come up with some so sort of thing. What I thought I heard yeah, and, and it's a little bit of a blending of what everybody said. More plants, and, and plants strategically placed to provide privacy to units so they're tall enough to achieve that effect, rather than the use of walls on places like the ground plane in the courtyard. And planting that's artful in a way to create more pedestrian interest and say, this is a green building as you're viewing it, either walking along or from above. Um, that the planting in the courtyard should be more organic, that there should be, it should have a feeling of lushness um, although, again, we think there still needs to be sun striking the courtyard, so we don't want a complete canopy. Mm -hmm. It needs to have some varied, um, but I think we can work on that. Uh, we will work on the corner element on 63rd to lighten that, consistent with the structural systems, and try and bring back something <coughs> that is um, a modification of where we're headed that works hopefully better for you and for us. We'll try to get the seven-foot sidewalk on 63rd. We should probably meet with the public works director and chat with them about um, that sure. um, and we'll work on enlarging the stair and the terrace at the 63rd Street entrance without losing a unit so we'll nip and tuck and push and pull and, and try to make that outdoor area bigger <coughs> and uh, more in inviting as an exit way since it can no longer <laughs> be an entryway <laughs> but at least visually porous and interesting and have some good outdoor use functions so that's is that a Pretty good summary of where we are for things we should focus on. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, great. Idea. Thank you very much for Thank your you, time and, and the focus on this stuff. It's really Appreciate helpful. Appreciate that. Okay, it's